Hello everyone, I'm going, excuse me, I'm going to tell you who killed who in Scream. Uh, so if you don't know, Scream is one of my favourite slash movies ever created. Uh, yeah, I just love Scream. But yeah, let's get started. So the killers for Scream is, of course, uh, we've got your boy Stu Matcher and Billy Loomis. Yep, played by, uh, Stu played by um, Matthew Lillard and... Uh, uh, Billy Loomis, played by Skeet Ulrich. So, let's get started with Casey and Steve's murder. The reason why Billy and Stu, uh, Stu have targeted uh, Casey and Steve on uh, one hand, this is a revenge uh, fold for Stu, who was embarrassed for being dumped by the strong athletic, uh, dumped by uh, the strong athletic and seemingly more desirable Steve. On the other hand, and very uh, more importantly. Casey sits next to Sydney in English, so that would be an indirect well, a way for the duo to get under Sydney's skin very early. Uh, on Billy, uh, on Billy is the caller throughout the movie, and in the scene particularly, uh, he is one uh, on the phone. My reasoning is he is more suave and more intelligent than Stu uh, is, and the idea man, he is just one of the uh, manipulating, a uh, manipul manipulating Casey while Stu does all the heavy lifting, setting up Steve in the chair, and we all know that the calls came from Neil Prescott's phone, so that are, so the only way to make it logical sense is if they stole the phone prior to the prior to the start of the movie. As uh, the one doing all the grunt work, Stu, is also uh, who also runs up and cuts Steve after Casey gets a trivia question wrong, and also through the chair through the window, Running in the house to let Billy in the door, Stu is also the ghost face to Casey, sees in the kitchen, who uh, then turns around at the window and starts to attack her, and he is temporarily knocked out. The next time we see Ghostface, he seemingly jumps out of nowhere and tackles Casey. This is Billy. The reasoning is why uh, there are ways that those two hold their knives, and attacks you and attacks uh, their victims. Stu cla uh, clamps his hands with two hands with the knife over his head and Billy holds the knife with just his right hand and he raises the knife above his shoulder and Billy also strangles his victims before he stabs him and we uh, see him do that later on in the film. As he is attacking Sydney where Stu is more likely to slice and dice and indicating his knowledge a boastfulness of his subject at the water fountain the next day when Casey uh, takes the ghost face mask off. Oh, oh yeah, uh, on the next day. When Casey takes the ghost face mask off, uh, it's Billy uh, she would recognize regardless, considering he is uh, her ex boyfriend's best friend and someone she would have uh, seen at school. Billy then drags uh, Casey to the tree. Where Stu helps Billy hang his hey, uh, hang the body and the record time hallowing out her insides and running off into the night. We do know that Stu is with Tatum that night based on the line the next day, but that doesn't indicate if it was all night or if it was just before or after the murders took place. So I think it was they did their little work, so Stu killed um, Steve, and, um, and, uh, Stu and, uh, Billy both, well, but yeah, they kind of both did, uh, Casey. Then skipping ahead on the next day, late afternoon, we can see Sydney arrive at home alone, uh, home alone, uh, after she gets dropped off by the school bus. I think that this is, uh, that Billy and Stu have already got to the house before her and they are waiting to night, uh, for nightfall to make their move. Billy of course would uh, have been seen outside the house while Stu would be hiding inside the whole closet. We do hear a weird noise, a uh, weird sound when Sydney goes and opens up the whole closet door to retrieve her overnight bag. But she doesn't look further inside as she closes the door very quickly. Moments later she switches as she switch switch off the TV and walked out. I walked back to the front of the house. She stops and hears a creaky noise coming from the closet, 
but chooses to ignore it. She continues over to the living room, where she falls asleep on the couch at 5.45pm. About 31 minutes later, Sydney is awoken by Tatum's phone call, after which Billy calls Sydney, and with the intent of luring her into the front porch, so that Stu can surprise her by lunging at her uh, out, out of the closet, and when she goes back into the house, we know this is Stu by how he is holding the knife. Here, uh, by running the blade across his, her throat and then raising it above his head with both hands. Also, as Stu is chasing Sydney up the stairs, we can distinctly hear his voice. He can, uh, he can be heard saying, easy, easy, which then we can hear again next time we see him at school lockers. Plus, in that scene, Stu is checking with, uh, with a mirror to see if he had any bump or a bruise, a bruise after headbutting Sydney from the night before, and possibly from getting hit uh, by the phone by Casey from the night before that. It doesn't look like uh, they are just trying to kill Sydney here. It just looks like they are trying to make her rattle her cage and set up the whole bait and switch with being a suspect. But we know uh, before Billy climbs into Sydney's window again, he must have, le he must have left uh, Neil Prescott's phone somewhere outside for Stu to collect, as the phone that Billy drops on the floor belongs to his father, Hank Loomis, after Neil's phone gets used one more time uh, in the movie, and that is by Stu, who calls Tatum's house later that night in order to corroborate uh, Billy's perceived innocence. Next up, we have the school restroom scene. Now, this is not Billy or Stu, it's just a prankster. It is more explicitly stated to be a prank, and this is a very evident, in fact, that Ghostface doesn't even have a knife. Uh, her, uh, not to mention, but there uh, was no feasible way Billy follows Sydney into the bathroom without her or the or the classmates, the bitchy classmates, seeing her, him. We also see that uh, we also see this isn't Stu because he is seen wearing uh, khakis, while the particular prankster has dirt uh, blue denim jeans on. After classes are cancelled due to the curfew while Stu is outside at the school inviting people to his shindig, Billy stays behind and murders Principal Henbury in his office. We know it's Billy based on how he holds his knife, and the fact that he is more into stabby stab and no, and not the slicey slice. The purpose of Mr. Henbury's murder is simply so Billy and Stu is uh, in a diet version to clear out the last of the party guests, which we find out later on, but for the time being, Billy is just going to leave Henbury's body at the school while he goes to and attends to other things, and those other things are going to Tatum's house, talking, uh, seeing uh, Sydney and uh, Tatum talking on the porch, and then again at the supermarket uh, where Tatum and uh, Sydney are buying food for the party. He was doing uh, that to be right on schedule with Sydney and Tatum. If anything, Stu would have been uh, the lookout while Billy did this while we do know that they meet up after school and entered the video store together at the same time, presumably after they headed to school when it was darker out uh, to hang Principal Hembry's body on the goalpost, at which point they go to Stu's to set up everything for the party. During the party, Billy Hines uh, just off the back room that connects to the garage door, uh, to the garage, to the kitchen, where he waits for Stu uh, to send uh, Tatum to get more beers. This will make Billy the ghost face that ultimately attacks Tatum and crushes her head in the garage door. My reasoning is that Stu is busy hosting a party and wouldn't have an opportunity to disappear for an extended period of time. Billy also arrives just in time at the front door as and ditched his costume at, and sneaking out of, the, out of the house in order to circle around. Uh, circle around. He also gets you a, confirm, a confirming look that suggests that Tatum has been taken care of, of Will, uh, of Will, Billy, and Sydney. Now he to, uh, now uh, go upstairs. Stu uh, is sure away with his guest to call his landline from Neil's cell phone, in disguised voice, where he tells Randy about Principal Henbury's murder, causing the rest of the guests to leave uh, with the house now emptied out. He is now able to sneak up on his parents' bedroom to fake Billy's death in front of Sydney. Then he chases Sydney around the stairs. Now it's now it seems uh, now it seems from now the point 
Moving forward, that Billy is playing dead upstairs while Stu is doing most of the work. I don't think that Stu can be doing all the work by himself, leaving Billy uh, just faking being dead. I think it. I think it's more involvement with Billy uh, when he see uh, when we see him fake his death. Stu enters uh, the living room, creeping him, creeping up behind. Oh, sorry, point where he emerges from the bedroom. However, after Sydney discovers that Tatum is uh, dead. Uh, after dead, she runs off uh, as to Stu, where he enters the living room, creeping up uh, behind Randy again. Uh, yeah, so that was Stu just creeping up behind Randy when he was watching, um, uh, what is it, was it, uh, Halloween. Again, we know that uh, this has to be Stu, how he is holding the knife before Sydney, before getting distracted by Sydney screaming, drawing him out, out, out at the house, at the news van where he kills Kenny's throat, or when he slits Kenny's throat. With Sydney getting away from, from Stu for a second, Billy as Ghostface comes out of the house to find her. As they notice, Gail and Dewey are, re are returning to the property, the quickly prompted uh, prompted Kenny's body on top of the news uh, van. My reasoning is because it looks like a two-man job. Billy then goes uh, into the house where Stu stays back and hides from Gail. He then follows her and she drives off and accidentally ditches the van into a tree where he checks on her to tell if she, is, if she has died. While all this is going down, Randy spots Stu without his mask on and races into the house with Stu in pursuit on him of him while Dewey, who has gone inside the, gone inside the house, is stabbed uh, in the back. I'm sorry, no in the back by Billy. Then he stumbles outside the front door. Billy chases Sydney to the police cruiser where she locks herself outside and he torments her uh, with the keys of uh, the car of the car that she doesn't have to drive off before sneaking into the hatch of the car and attempts to strangle her as Billy likes to do that. After Sydney breaks away, he quickly disappears around the side of the house where he runs into Stu informing him that Gail is dead and Randy no uh, knows that he is the killer. We know Stu told Billy about Gail and Billy questions him on it. Um, she shows up later, so there had to be a reconvenient, a recon, reconven, I can't even say that word before. They reveal themselves to Sydney. Billy then runs back into the house uh, through the garage door and up the back stairs. We are to position him into the stairwell. While Stu runs to the front of the house in time to intercept Randy and from the point on the rest is history. There you go. That was a long video. I'm sorry I didn't, I, I didn't do it yesterday. I was just really busy. So yeah, I couldn't do it. But yeah, thank you for watching this uh, Who Killed Who and Scream. Hope you enjoyed it. Please subscribe to my channel. Be a big help. And stay tuned to my uh, 20 anticipated movies for the rest of 2021 coming out today. And I don't know if this already came out, but my Scream uh, 1996 kill count. Hope you enjoyed this video. Please subscribe to my channel. Be a big help. Thank you for watching. Take care. Peace.